Have you ever played a game and saw one thing while your friend or like, you know, some other player saw a different thing? So for example, I know in a lot of uh, Roblox like simulator games, you know, they have this like big wall that's obstructing you from entering like world two if you don't have enough cash or something, right? But then to the player, let's say your friend gets enough cash, okay? And then to your friend, the wall disappears, but to you, the wall remains. How do games do this? How can you make it so that both players see the same thing in different ways? And I will actually say that, you know, while I'm doing this in Roblox and everything, this is how a lot of games actually function. And even if you aren't a Roblox developer or just a game developer in general, I still think you'll find this insanely interesting and actually valuable because I think it's just a good knowledge to have and it's pretty interesting as well. So what I'll do is I'll make a sphere, okay? It's just a regular white sphere. I'm here, I'm walking, or I should say levitating. And as you can see, this sphere is white, right? However, right now, I'm in the client. And now you might be wondering, okay, what is the client, right? The client is what you see as the player, right? So everything, all of this right now that I'm seeing is my client. However, what is giving me these visuals? How, for example, do I know that this ball has moved there? What does the actual physics calculations to say, okay, the ball is moving? Because how do you think that, you know, low-end devices can play Roblox, right? How do you think that, like, an iPhone 3, I mean, I don't I don't even know how, how low it can go, but probably an iPhone 3 can play Roblox, right? And the way it does that is by doing all of the calculations on the server. So the server is effectively, like, the main part, oh, the ball's rolling away. The server is effectively the main part of the game, right? The client is what the player sees, and this can be easily manipulated. So this is how hackers and exploiters work, right? They manipulate their clients to basically send the game a message that isn't actually true, right? For example, they can send a message that, hey, this part is actually, um, I can go through it, right? So they can lie, and then the game will let them go through that part if there aren't any security checks in place. So that's kind of the idea, right? The server is just basically the actual main, it's the secure part of the game, while the client is what you see, and it can very easily be exploited if um, not like handled well, okay? So as we, can, as we saw, right, the ball is white on the server. However, if I switch to the client right now, and if I go ahead and I just, you know, change the parts color to be red, for example, on the server, the parts color is still white. And my character has a very interesting shadow, but that's besides the point, right? As you can see, this is still white, however, this is red, right? So I see it as red, but everyone else, assuming, you know, they haven't done their own client changes, will see it as white. And another thing as well to note is that, as you saw, when you change something on the client, it only affects the client, right? So me changing the parts to red, it doesn't change it on the server. It's not going to change it to other players. It will only affect me. But if I were to change something on the server, for example, make the part, I don't know, purple or something, that change gets replicated. It gets sent out to every single player. And so now it's purple. So changes on the server are basically sent out to all players, right? Well, changes on the client are only sent out to your individual player. Now, there are exceptions, right? For example, sometimes uh, what you could do on the client is you could send a message to the server, right? So this, this is how, for example, player movement is handled, right? All of the key binds, so me, me pressing W right now and, and, you know, walking forward is done locally, right? It's done on the client. The way the server knows that I'm moving is that, um, where am I? <laughs> the way the server knows that I'm moving is that I send a message to the server, right? So the server gets my message, it checks, it does some security checks to make sure that I'm not like hacking or exploiting, you know, like I'm not flying or something. And then when it's actually sure that I'm not flying, there's a small delay and then it moves me. So for example, look, I'm going to move and then I'm going to immediately switch, okay? See, there's a slight delay, right? So there's always a little delay because the server needs to do certain checks. And now if you're a game developer, right? Or just someone interested in game development, you might be wondering how would I actually like introduce this feature onto my games, right? Because like what I did then was I just edited this in studio, right? But how would I actually make local changes while the game is running? Well, the way you can do this is by using a local script. Okay, so as you may know, there are two types of scripts. Well, there's three, I guess, technically, but Module scripts right now don't count, okay? I have a whole video on them if you want to go check that out. The main script is a regular script, so this is a server script, okay? Anything done on the server script is for the server. While a local script, it actually says right here, it runs on the client, uh, you know, player's device instead of the server. The thing with local scripts is that they cannot run everywhere. They have to be like inside of a player to actually run. And so the way you actually add a local script inside of a player is you just go to starter player scripts and you add a local script. So whenever a player joins the game, this script will get cloned 
to that player. Okay, so I can say local player is equal to game dot players local player. So this, this will give me our player, right? And uh, we don't really actually need this player, right? In fact, actually, I don't even think we're going to keep the script in starter player script, because what I'll do is I will make a button, okay, just a simple text button. Okay, I'll just add it here. And I'll add the script inside of the button. Local script can also work inside of a user interface as well, right? Because user interface also gets co copied over to the player. And so what I could do is I could say, script.parent, so script.parent being the button, dot activated whenever the button is pressed, will connect it to a function, meaning that some code, this piece of code will run. I hate code assist so much, bro. <laughs> it's not even funny. Uh, script.parent, that activated, yeah, connect function. Yeah, we can just say workspace, we'll wait for child part just to make sure it's loaded, dot color is equal to color 3new make it green or something. Whenever I press the button, I'm going to set the color equal to green. So it's white. On the server, it's white. But when I press the button, it's now lime green, but on the server, it is still white. So this is a scenario where if I press the button and if another player joins uh, and they don't press the button, for them, it's still gonna be white, right? So for example, if you know there's like 50 players in the server and I'm the only one who presses this button, only I will see the part as you know this lime annoying green color, everyone else will still see it as white. And obviously, you know, there's again, ways to go around this. Like, for example, if I want this, this change to be visible to everyone, I could use something called a remote event. Yeah, remote event. I could just say uh, game, replicated storage, remote events, fire server. And then on the, on the server script, I could get this event and then like, you know, do whatever I need to on the server. My first ever video is actually on a remote event in case you are interested. And that is basically the idea, right? So I know I showed you this on Roblox, but this works on literally every game. So this is how every single game effectively works, right? It basically gets input locally and then sends a message to the server, checks it on the server, and then, you know, sends input back. So if you are a regular viewer, I hope that you found this information helpful and interesting. And if you are a game developer who not only found this interesting, but also kind of enjoyed the way I've been teaching so far throughout the video, then in the description, I actually have a free preview of my six hour course. So if you want to go check that out, be my guest. And yeah, so comment something that, you know, you would comment normally on a video like this. And we are back to basics. Thank you for watching.